Hey, yo! This is government buildings. You can't come in here without authorization. I'm sorry now. Back up there now. Come on. Come well, look, look, it's all right, guard. Uh, the boss said it was all right. Sorry, only right. official personnel are allowed. I am official, you gobshite. It's me, guard. Oh, Mr. Mara. Oh, yeah. I, I, I beg your pardon. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. Go right in. Yeah, Tell him so now. Thanks, guard. Sorry about that, Mr. Mara. Sorry, such a thing. I, I didn't recognize you. I, I never saw you driving a white high ace before. Hello, is that five-star pizza? <clears throat> uh, Grant, uh, listen, listen, I'd like 1,500 pizzas. Uh, that's correct. 1,500 pizzas, yeah. Sent you, uh, huh? I uh, know, uh, whatever. Yeah, how special sounds, Grant? Oh, yes, uh, extra anchovies. Yeah, why not? Uh, and olives. Oh, as many as you like. No, 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 no don't hold the pineapple. Lash it on. Yeah. Uh, now, how much will that be? £6.60 each. Uh, well, I did say 1,500. That's what? £9,900. Oh, grand. No, 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 no. Don't bother with the discount. No, I'll pay cash. Yeah, yeah. Trim County Maid. Yeah. Oh, no. Anyone will tell you what my house is, sure. I enjoy the local TD. Oh, yeah, that's right. I make the receipt out to Dempsey. Yeah. Noel Dempsey. Good luck now. <laughs> and in conclusion, I would plead to the party for unity on this important issue. I, I, I appeal to all of you to support me on this. Remember... <laughs> the future of Fianna Fáil, as we know, could depend on the decision we make here, and right here and now. All right, comrades, all right, all right. Let's take a vote on Gerard's motion. If it's all right by you, Charles, of course I wouldn't dream of taking a vote without checking with you first. Uh, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. vote away. This is Democratic Party, after all. Off you go, Biddy. Thank you, Taoiseach. The motion reads, the motion reads... That tea and kebabs. Shish kebabs. Thank you, Deputy O'Rourke. Shish kebabs be ordered straight away in case of delays later. Sorry, sorry. May I insert an amendment that as well as shish kebabs, there be sandwiches and savouries and sushi also. Oh, well, these be open sandwiches. It would be wrong, I think, Madam Chairperson, in the present mood to be seen to order open sandwiches. Oh, yes. For the sake of democracy, I think the closed sandwiches, with, however, a choice of fillings, would be the preferred option. No, 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 no. Please, lads, Mary. Porrick, John, let's not burst open these sandwiches. You'll burst them open. Let's not get bogged down in a choice of fillings. I, I plead with you even now. It's, it's not too late to go back to kebabs. It's certainly the option I, I would prefer, particularly with lots of that garlic sauce in mind. Why don't we act like sensible people and for the sake of the party and the nation, ordering kebabs now, or else God only knows what'll happen in this meeting. I beg you. <laughs> okay, Has everybody heard? Yeah, this... Now that's the Kildare Street entrance of Frontier, oh, right? Right, right. Okay, now hold on, hold on, will you hold on? Now come on, everyone. Oh, a quick oh, practice now before I let you out of the van. You ready? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, right. oh, 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 we love you, Charlie. Charlie we we you. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Charlie, we love you, Charlie. We okay, that's grand. We got that one out. Oh, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Wow, Charlie, we love you. Shut up. Now, don't forget, Albert's lost his stay car. So, any suggestions on that one? Well, I don't, look, Rennes tries a la. Oh, very good. Rennes tries a la 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 la. Ooh, la 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 la. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. No, 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 okay, no. Remember. It's a fiver each at the end of the day. Okay, okay, okay fiver each. Now, has everyone got that black card? Yeah. Right, now out you go and don't knock over that tape recorder on the way out. Charlie Board, Charlie Board, Charlie Board, Charlie Board, Charlie Board, And now to the decision of the city council to ban Sinn Féin from the mansion house until it renounces violence. Uh, a wise move, Emin McCann. Uh, no, uh, frankly, this decision to ban the Ardesh uh, from the mansion house smacks to me of double standards. It is a case of typical liberal Dublin bourgeois policy. But surely you renounce violence, Emin. Uh, these councillors have the temerity to ban Sinn Féin, uh, the first legitimate government of the state from its original parliament building for its annual social. And uh, what particularly sickens me is the hypocrisy. I know for a fact that some of these councillors who are the first to condemn the bombing of a hospital 
or all the while devouring huge quantities of South African and Israeli oranges up in their luxury Dublin apartments, peeling away like there's no tomorrow. But really, has this anything to do with what we're talking uh, uh, about? Quite, Wilson, in but... fact, it has, because up front it's all an skill and atrocity, but behind it it's another story. Argentinian debts, Italian bananas, Maxwell House. What? It's a clear-cut case of double standards. They have no time for the armed struggle, but they seem to find nothing wrong with uh, whale semen-based hair oil and CFC aerosols, do they? It's about time the public got wise to the inconsistencies at the heart of so-called constitutional politics. Charles, you look tired. Is that chair uncomfortable? It must be. Here, Vincent Brady, come up here. There now, Charles, sit down there on Vincent. That's it now. Is that comfortable, Charles? Uh, and that's fine. Thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, thanks, Vincent. M my, my pleasure, Taoiseach. I just hope that being down on all four won't hinder my ability to cast my vote for you, sir. Uh, thank you, true and loyal friend. So let us take the vote, remembering just two important things. One, a vote for Charles will bring shouts and cheers of approval from the rooftops of the nation and blessings will shower on each and every one of you. And two, uh, vote freely as your conscience dictates. Happy days are here again. La, 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 la. PJ, PJ! What's that way that telescope and long range microphone right. business and listening? Right. You're almost fidgeting well, with gadgets. Well, I'm sorry, boss. I have a question for you. Yeah, yes, boss. Eleven ones is what? Uh, eleven. Eleven twos is? It's, it's only twenty two, boss. Eleven threes? Thirty three. Eleven fours? Thirty four. Uh, what's next? Oh, please, what's me? Who, I'm sure. Knows, me, 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 boss. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. No, back that, of the class. Mara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eleven fives. Fifty-five, boss. <laughs> Fifty-five, fifty-five, fifty-five. Did you see the fear in their faces, Mara? I did, I did, Mara. Imagine, Mara. Oh, yeah. Two little words sent them scurrying for cover. Open, Open vote. <laughs> it has the same cadence as bubonic play. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a hiatus. Ah, uh, stop now, you're you stop. Oh, I was shocked. I, I, oh, I, 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 I couldn't I, believe I, that of you. Well, you no. get out, stop now, you Come here to me. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. Oh. oh, and there was lots of, I'm voting from Taoiseach, oh. but I support the secret ballot. Oh, for God's sake. And, oh, Kennedy, oh, prince of village idiots, <laughs> scared of his shite. <laughs> they all are. They think I don't know, Mara, but I know I, yeah. they couldn't look me in the eye and no. vote me down. No, never, 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 never in a never, million never, years. Never, 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 never. It's interesting how yeah. nature conspires to suit my purposes. Yeah, I hope. All week the elements have been windy, <clears throat> but never as windy as elements of my party. Oh, I'm quite overwhelmed tonight because standing here next to me is the enormous and powerfully built Jack Charlton. Jack, you have a bit of a reputation as a tough lad, don't you? Booger off and mind your own bloody business, you daft lass. Oh, now aren't you a gas man altogether? Have you always had that native Geordie wit, Jack? Oh, yes, a good laugh is worth a bog of vomit in the mouth, I always say. I love your expressions. Och, Anish Ayak, on a more serious note, we failed to qualify for the European Championships. Will the buck stop with you, Mara Cheerful? They certainly will. I'll go out there and face up and kick in the teeth any daft journalist to Raymond what's his name or any of you Irish that says it's my fault. And the viewers are dying to know, Jack. Will you be staying on? What do you mean here with you after the show? You don't sweat much for a big lass. <laughs> oh, stop it, Shin. You're a terrible man, Erfad. No, I mean as manager. Well, naturally, I'll be staying. I've got my responsibilities. Oh, good Jevon. You mean to build the team for the World Cup? No, I mean a few hundred radio voiceovers, some telly ads, lots of after-dinner speeches, and I believe I might be your new uh, Minister for Defence. Well, I'm sure we can depend on you not to score an own goal anyway. Good, bugger ass. Garamela Mahaga Jack Astor. I get Sloan and Nish accord you. Sloan! Bye! Now, uh, <coughs> Master Bertie. 
sit up here. <clears throat> what would you like? Go on, close your eyes and pick a portfolio. Any portfolio. <laughs> uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Hoy. Uh, actually, uh, I'd like all of them. <laughs> no, don't be silly. That's not allowed. Do you think if it was constitutional for one person to hold all the portfolios, I'd put up with those other 14 gobshites and their so-called cabinet meetings? <laughs> you want all of them. Man after my own heart. Greedy little gurrier. You know what I do with greedy people? Um, you, you appoint them to semi-state companies. Oh, very droll. Now go on, pick a ministry. Um, let, let, let me see. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a big portfolio. Uh, can, can, I, can I have finance? Clever boy. Told you would pay you to help me hang Albert out, didn't I? Uh, Albert? <laughs> I did nothing. Precisely. <clears throat> Here's finance. Enjoy. Well, they're back, and we're delighted to say hello again to our hilarious Stone Age family in a new series of The Flintstones. Porrick, dear, Porrick! Oh, me, oh, my. Porrick, are you still in bed? It's nearly noon. <sighs> oh, Wilma, I'm in despair, so I am. What is a man if he cannot provide for his women folk? Oh, Porrick, don't you worry. I've got myself a very nice part-time job. We'll be okay. P. Flintstone has failed you, Wilma. I'm not a man at all. Sure, I might as well be in the kitchen now, washing dishes, for all the use I am. That's just what I was going to suggest, Porrick. Why don't you go and wash the dishes while I'm at the office, dear? What? Asking P. Flintstone to wash dishes? Why don't you go ahead and give me a rope and tell me to hang myself entirely? <laughs> oh, Porrick, it's not so bad. And you really need to do something because you're never going to get your old job back now, are you? That's right. Torture me. Why not bring Matta Harney up here to the bedroom to throw cream pies at me? Not that she'd part with them, of course. <laughs> Well, I could phone her, I suppose. But Bertie Rubble is here to say hello. Isn't that nice of him? <laughs> Hiya, Porrick. Hey, have I got news for you, Porrick? I got a promotion today. I'm in charge of accounts now. You've some nerve swanning in here, Bertie Rubble, so you have. Backstabber. Oh, uh, come on, Porrick. I kind of thought that as I ain't so hot at adding and subtracting, you might give me some help in that department, eh, Porrick? You've got to be joking, Rubble. I might be an ex-primary school teacher, but even P. Flintstone couldn't teach someone as thick as you. <laughs> hey, but you ain't got no job now, Parry. Oh, yes, I do, actually. I have heaps of washing and ironing to get through. <laughs> hey, wait till the boys at work hear about this. It'll crack them up. <laughs> Empty vessels make the most noise, Bertie. You won't put P. Flintstone down, will ma? Show me this washing machine till I see can I get the hang of it. And leave the knitting needles out for me too, will you? I might run up a jersey for you by the time I get home from work. And I was thinking if I made some sandwiches and baked a nice Madeira cake for tea, then we'd all sit down together like a real family. Oh, poor it. And now, around the world on 80 grand. This week, Jerry... Gerard Collins teaches us Dutch without tears. When it's spring again, I will bring again uh, the government jet to Amsterdam, uh, cause an old song. With a heart that's true uh, and a duty free shopping bag that's bulging, I'll bring to you uh, the, the tulips to Amsterdam. And, and this week, this tulip went to Holland, uh, to Nordvik, to renegotiate uh, some bloody thing or other in between some excellent Dutch cuisine. All our guide wanted to discuss was a two-tier Europe, whereas I'd have given anything for a three-tier cake. But Holland is not all food, you know. The great thing about taking the special foreign affairs package tour is that there is a special welcome, or lots of groveling as I like to think of it. Yes, travel has its drawbacks, such as all that old bowing and scraping, and as a special guest, they don't hold back on the motorcycle escorts. They have the few bob and they spend it. In Holland, they certainly know how to push out the boat, and when I got onto one on a canal, they had to push it out. Then to Amsterdam and its tiny bridges, which I was not allowed to cross due to weight restrictions, and thence to the tulip fields and the many, many thousands of tulip bulbs, which, despite the protestations of my host, I, I found quite palatable. Time for a visit to the Van Gogh Museum, which was mainly old paintings with no sign of as much as a snack bar. No, I particularly liked Vincent's potato eaters, which made me pop out for some pomfrits and a herring or two, which the local school kids threw to me. 
Holland, as you know, is mainly below sea level. They have, therefore, naturally a great fear of salt water and asked me several times to stop crying. The sea is kept out by a system of dikes, and I'm not talking Paul cars here, and it's frightening indeed to think of anyone bursting them up. I said to Albert, you'll destroy Holland, you'll wreck it, you'll burst up the dikes, you're showing frightening immaturity vis-a-vis -vis maritime engineering. Don't wreck Holland, Albert, I feel you'll burst up Now, staff, I want us to welcome Mr. Ahern and accord him the same respect we gave Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> now, now, just because they're not graduates, much less honours graduates like ourselves, we must be respectful of our finance ministers. <laughs> now, remember, right? No, no arguing with the minister, no haggling, just do what we always do and ignore him. He will come to understand our policies by and by. <laughs> Sir, sir, I, I think the minister's arriving now. Mm. Oh, look, his car's stopped down the road. He's walking the rest of the way. Oh, yes, our minister is a man of the people. <laughs> At least he won't catch cold in that warm anorak. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Reynolds would have been a Copeland sort of man. Master O'Hearn's Couturier would appear to be Alpha Bargains. <laughs> <laughs> Master Ahern is a master of metaphor. It is his way of signaling to the public his budget intentions. The anorak in November is intended as a portent of February's hair shirt. Oh, look, sir, he's got a whole bunch of hawkers with him. Yes, I think you will find that they came from Moor Street, part of Master Bertie's entourage, his travelling road show, as it were. Man of the people, heart of the realm, and all that. Oh, uh, no, that's a little on the, on the high side. That's the cheapest I, you get this um, side I, I, of the I, river. I'll give you a half. Of course, look, sir. <laughs> he's haggling with them. <laughs> mm, he may haggle with the hawkers, but he may not haggle with the Department of Finance. Our department. Right, that's <laughs> and 25 the apples. Well, well, you know, I thank you for putting your, your price off so, um, so plainly. Cunis wrong, Cunis inish, Cunis! Now, today I want to talk to you about pounds and ounces, grams and kilos. In other words, how to weigh things. And I want you all to listen very carefully because it's very complicated indeed. Gohana Jacker Er Fad. Now, the good boy at the back, do you know what you weigh? Seven stone six and a half ounces, miss. Well, now aren't you the boo who lodge your air fad? Now, that's what you weigh here in the class. But if you were on the moon, for example, you would be a different weight altogether, wouldn't you? Yes, You'd miss. weigh much less. Yes. Isn't that interesting now? Or just as another example, if you were in intervention land, you would be a different weight again. This time, you would weigh much more. more yes. Now, intervention land, as we know, is where we send lots and lots of Cows. That's right, cows. Never to be seen again. Yeah. So you see, a Afoshti, we do put men on the moon and women too, like Kuno of Jay, but we only put cows into intervention. intervention. Now, the most famous person who used to weigh cows was Mr. Who? Einstein, miss. Kohanawa Erfad. And he used to find that the weight of one cow changed so much from place to place that he invented a whole theory about it. The theory of relativity, Naga. So that we have the fattest, fattest cow, cow in no, all the, the world. world. Welcome to Marion Street, Minister. On behalf of the department and staff, may I extend a warm and felicitous welcome to you as our new boss. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, oh, thank you very much, uh, yeah. Mr. Cromien. I'd like to uh, to, to express my, my um, gratitude for, for that welcome and uh, hope we can get down to the estimates uh, straight away. Uh, may I take your anor uh, your <coughs> coat, <laughs> Minister? Oh, sure. Thank you very much. But um, don't crush uh, the program. It's in the pocket. The program from the Dubs. It's yeah. Oh yes, uh, the football game. Yes, you did make mention of it on the TV, leaving the. Um, <coughs> Parliamentary party meeting. I, I trust you enjoyed the game. That was great, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, I love the dubs, you know, uh, Hill 16. Ah, uh, Hill 16. Vanquished, sadly. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's, mm. that's right. Uh, I'd forgotten, um, it was, you know, brass monkey weather up there on Sunday, you know yourself, but it's, it's, it's great to go and, and see the dubs and, and, you know, be seen by the dubs. Uh, thousands of them. Yes, would you like some lunch, Minister? We could dine in Le Cocardie, perhaps, uh, or a private dining room, favoured on occasion by on Taoiseach, or perhaps the Barclay Court. Uh, whites have a private room, as far as I recall, but, sir. Uh, I, I know, I, I'll just cycle around to Burdocks for a one-on-one. -on -one. From the heart of the Northeast comes the sweet, sad strains of Donegal's favourite son. Jim McDade sings lots of old favourites on his new album, I Nearly Made It. My M-I-N-I-S-T-R-Y 
was announced today But I had to say an O Cause of the IRA It's a bittersweet album of hope stashed and love lost I'm borderline, you see, and they can't put me In charge of the A-R-M-Y I'm not violent, no, but I'd like to blow The opposition S-K-Y high As always, of course, the songs have that special patriotic fervor That makes Jim's voice so distinctive As on the classic Stand by your man Don't ever Extradite him, be always there beside him. The four courts, cold and lonely. Jim sings those songs of bitter experience with the pain of a man who's been through it all and in a very short space of time. Don't forget to remember me. Nearly had a ministry. But it was not to be I'm sorry Never has a star had such immediate impact on the public So toss away those old Daniel O'Donnell tapes Jim McDade has guts, he has passion And that puts him on top of the heap As we say in the wee north His story makes a plane crash seem like a blessing Don't forget to remember me, sir Jim McDade's new album I nearly made it. By now, before he's completely sold out. God, I don't know if I should have done it, Michael. It was a lousy thing to do. I mean, he was only defending a constituent. I mean, to be fair... Madeline, to... don't tell me you regret it. Oh, Are you no. going soft on the pros now, oh, Madeline? Oh, God, no, Michael. Not at all. Absolutely not. No way. It's just that he... It's just, yes? Well, that is... McDade is... hot. Not a provo. Of course he's not. He's just a bit of Donegal weed that blew in. Well, then why did I have to say all that stuff about John? I mean, why did I have to... You don't to... get it, do you? We're engaged here in an out and out war with a bunch of anti-democratic thugs bent on power tenny cast. The provos? No, Fianna Fáil. Oh, that's <laughs> right, yeah. We got him. We got him, Madeline. We got McDade. Great old Luftwaffe tactic, that. Get them on the ground before they can even take off. And old James McDade was riddled on the runway. Oh, <laughs> did I do that? You did, and you did it very well, too. You riddled him. Nah! Good night, Irene. <laughs> He'll see you in his dreams. He'll see you in his nightmares. You stabbed and twisted. You got him. You tore the hat out of him. Oh, jeez, <laughs> Hannibal. Our mic will go easy. I had a fry in the restaurant this morning. I remember a Fianna Fáil canvasser called on me once. <laughs> I ate his kidneys with some fava beans and an excellent Chianti. Oh. <laughs> Can you smell it, Clarice? Oh, yeah. Can you smell it? Can you smell oh, it, Clarice? It's desperate, <laughs> desperate. And it shouldn't really. It is only mud. Vinnie Jones, congratulations on your successful search for Irish roots. It transpires that your great-grandfather was none other than Dermot Morgan, your great-grandmother, Paulie McLean, and your granduncle was Owen Rowe. Your nephew is, in fact, Jimmy McStemmerich, the country singer. You are, in fact, related also to the writers Morgan and Stemmerich and their first cousin, Julian Clare. You're a cousin once removed to the engineer, Lockie Butler Jr., and the director, Jerry Stemmerich. Fantastic. Recorded at Real Good Studios Dublin, Scrap Saturday is from Q Productions for RTE.